Welcome to a class on phonetics and phonology. In this video, I'm going to show you the basic understanding of phonetics and phonology. Now, before coming to talk more about phonetics and phonology, I would like you to listen to these sounds. Okay, this is the first group of sounds. Listen. Can you identify those sounds? Well, those sounds are sounds in the universe. Okay, so all of sounds that we hear, not only human sounds, not only animal sounds, but also all of the sounds, either the sounds of water, the sounds of vehicles and so on. Okay, and we categorize this as all sounds in the universe. Okay, now listen to the other group of sounds. about these sounds. These sounds are very close to us because some of them are animal sounds and human sounds, especially babies' cryings and babies' loves. So we categorize this group of sounds into animal and human sound. And this is much closer Okay, is much closer to us. It means that we have limited the wider scope of sounds from all sounds in the universe into only sounds produced by animal and humans. Okay, now listen again to the other group of sounds. Akan angka kemiskinan kita naik menjadi tiga per lima dari total penduduk kita. Hidup di bawah garis kemiskinan. Once, there was a poor man. His name was Hans. He had no money, no house, and no food. But he was happy. Kifahaluka. How are you? For boys, kifahaluka. With ka with fatha. Haluka. How are you? Okay. How about these sounds? These sounds are certainly produced by humans, okay? And these are called speech sounds, okay? These are called speech sounds. So we have the smallest curve of sounds. And you see that this group of sounds, okay? The sounds that are produced by humans, this becomes the object of our study on phonetics and phonology. So we can simply say that the similarity between phonetics and phonology is that both study sounds which are produced by humans and these sounds are known as speech sounds. Okay, well, now let's differentiate between phonetics and phonology or how phonetics and phonology are different. Okay, now let's see. Let's see the scope of phonetics and phonology. Well, the first one, phonology belongs to microlinguistics. Phonology belongs to microlinguistics. On the other hand, phonetics belongs to macrolinguistics. 
Why? Because phonology only studies about sounds. Okay, phonology studies exclusively sounds. And you know that microlinguistics means the study of the internal element of language. And you see one of the internal elements of language is sound. And sound is considered as the smallest, as the smallest element of a language. And that is the only object of study in phonology. Meanwhile, in phonetics, in addition to sounds, we are also studying speech organs. In other words, we, do, we don't only study about the internal element of language, the sounds, but we also study about the external element of language, that is speech organ. You see that speech organ is part of our body, okay? It's part of our body, and it is not the internal element of language. So in phonetics, we study both the internal element of language and the external element of language. Therefore, phonetics belongs to macro-linguistics. That is the first one. Okay, next. Phonetics deals with sound production, sound transmission, and sound perception. Meanwhile, phonology only deals with sound structure. So you see that phonetics studies sound production, okay, and then sound transmission, and the last one is sound perception. Meanwhile, phonology only studies sound structure. Okay, well, now let's focus on phonetics. There are three branches of phonetics. Okay, now I would like to illustrate, okay, this classification by using uh, an image or a picture. Okay, let's see. Okay, you see that this is a picture of our brain. Okay, this is a picture of our brain. And when we want to produce any sound, we need to encode it. We need to encode the concept in our brain, okay, before we produce any sounds. And you are here. The result of the encoding will be represented by the linguistic arm. Okay, the result of the encoding process is represented by the linguistic element. And this linguistic element, okay, is realized by using our focal track. Okay, by using our focal track. And this is also called by our articulator or our organs of speech. And you see that the process, of course, is called sound production. So we have a concept of sound in our mind and we encode it into a linguistic element. So the result of the encoding is represented by the linguistic element and relies physically by using our focal track. And this is called sound production. Okay, and this sound, whatever the sound is, okay, transmit it. Okay, the sound from our focal track is transmitted into the other person's ears. Okay, so the sound is transmitted. And you see, whenever sound is coming to our, he our ears or our hearing cortex, and then we are going to perceive the sound, okay? We are going to identify the sound. We're going to, to make us understand the sound that is coming to our ears. And this is called as sound production, sorry, sound perception. And once we have identified the sound, okay? And then we are going to represent that sound into the 
linguistic element. What is it used for? In order that we can decode the sound. So decoding also means comprehending, okay? In order to comprehend the sound that has come into our, into our ears. So you see, this is the process of sound production, sound transmission, and sound perception. And by using this illustration, okay, so we are introduced to three kinds or three branches of phonetics. Okay, the one that deals with sound production is called articulatory phonetics. So you can see that articulatory phonetics studies sound production or concerns sound production. And then in terms of sound transmission, the branch of phonetics is known as acoustic phonetics. So acoustic phonetics deals with sound transmission. And then in terms of sound perception, how we understand the sound, how we perceive the sound, okay? This study is known as auditory phonetics. So there are three branches of phonetics. The first one is articulatory phonetics that deals with sound production. The second one is acoustic phonetics that deals with sound transmission. And the last one is auditory phonetics that deals with sound perception. However, our focus in this course is only on articulatory phonetics. So what is articulatory phonetics? Articulatory phonetics is the study of how sounds are produced. In the other word, we can say that articulatory phonetics is the study of sound production. So any speech sound cannot be produced without various interactions of our speech organs. And of course, you know, the airstream management. In other words, if there is no air, there is no sound produced. So air is also one of the main elements or main requirements in producing any speech sound. Okay, so any speech sound cannot be produced without various interactions of our speech organs and airstream management. And then you see that articulatory phonetics plays the most important role compared to the other two branches of phonetics in studying uh, sounds. Why? Because the classifications of sounds applicable in the prescribed IPA, okay, International Phonetic Alphabet is determined based on the articulatory variables. And these articulatory, articulatory variables will be introduced to you in the next meeting. Okay, so just wait. The, the other discussion on the articulatory variables. That's all for today and see you.